Hello everybody, and welcome back once again to Let's Play Disco Elysium with none other than Mr. Superstar himself, DJ Costo, banging out the tunes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I quite like this little feature, but we're going to have to... Uh, Gonna have to put it away for now. It's causing a bit of a scene. Right. Okay, so. Ah, normality is restored. I'm sure Gart is very happy with that. So, yeah, to start today's session off, we're gonna go and speak with Classia. A couple of things to ask her. We need her to, to confirm the details of the dead man so that we can tick it off our list. And we need to talk to her about the tape that we've just listened to on our little boombox machine. So uh, I'll keep us occupied for a little while and then we've got the rest of the day to explore. Maybe to the north of the fishing village a little bit. Take a little walk along the beach and look for a spot to take uh, is it Lily, Lillian? What was she called? Yeah, that last that we're going to go and chat up a bit later when, when he's not here. Yeah, we need to find a nice little spot to walk with, with for you know, for some alone time. Help pass the time whilst we're investigating this murder. You know, it can't be all work and no play. You know. Right then. So before we start today's session proper, I just got a couple of things to go over. First of all, I've put a point that we had left over from the last session into a spree de corps. We are a superstar cop after all, so we should know what cops get up to. We do know what cops get up to. The spirit of policing, cop geist, we know it all. We're down with the cop speak. So that's the first uh, thing to note. The second thing to note is the second point that I had, because I had two skill points, has been put into another thought cabinet slot. And then we are now learning some kind of superstar. Because hey, we are. So whilst we're learning that, we'll get minus two to logic. But it only takes one hour and uh, ten minutes to learn, so uh, it's a short, short one. So hopefully we'll get a nice little bonus once we have uh, memorised that. Uh, I don't know, the ability to dance a funky dance. The ability to sing like uh, Fred Astaire when we get on the old uh, microphone. Who knows? We'll find out in one hour and ten minutes time. Right then, shall we? Okay, so uh, I've, I've, it was... We need to question her about the hanged guy, and um, all of the chat options were greyed out still, so rather than bore you with going through all of the conversations again, trying to find the right one, I finally got there. And it's uh, we, we, we ask her again about his name, his eyes, his age, and she continues down the line that she can't talk about him, maybe later. She said that this morning, so she's still not ready to speak. We don't think. However, our Inland Empire has butted in and says that uh, she meant she sees him in her dreams. I've also seen him in a dream. We can't help but blurt out. You, you have? Not like I do, I imagine. She's run out of cigarette. Time to light a new one. She sees them in each other's arms. You're in each other's arms, aren't you? Yes, and then he's dead, his mouth agape. She looks into the light green pack of cigarettes and pulls out another one, preparing to light it. Ah, well, not now, <laughs> certainly not. Better conclude this part of our talk. Oh, uh, yes, the young woman dips her cigarette into the lighter's flame and inhales. So she still hasn't divulged what we want her. Name, eyes, age, physical characteristics, just to confirm what we needed to confirm. But uh, we'll have to return again to that line of questioning. However, we do have further questions that uh, we need to ask her. Titus Hardy gave us a recording where the deceased states his intention to commit rape. She puffs her coffee cup down. Oh, she puts, sorry, her coffee cup down. How do you puff a coffee cup down? Uh, did he? A smile flits across her face. I never said he was a good man, or that he had good intentions, only that he was never bad to me. Well, on this tape, he specifically identifies you as the target. 
Hmm. Where did they get this recording exactly? It's intercepted radio chatter of the deceased, recorded via a de-encryption station. It's authentic enough. She arches her brow. Does it say, or does he say, he's going to do it Soldier of the Apocalypse style? Uh, well, yeah, I think they were the exact words, actually, yes. Uh, yeah. That was practically his pickup line. She picks the cup back up. A memory surfaces in her tired neocortex. It's not entirely unpleasant. Did he say whores a lot? Was he pretty much on the verge of doing it cohoy style? Um, yes, I seem to recall cohoy mentioned, yes. He wasn't actually there. He didn't do a tour, or at least didn't tell me he did. Would have been overkill anyway. He lived his own little cohoy. It was in his everything. Hmm. You think he was trying to scare people? No. I'm pretty sure he did all those things. And then had to internalise them to keep on living. Until they just sort of turned into his... She thinks. What's the word I'm looking for? Um, persona. Running joke. I was going to say running joke. And it sounds like you didn't even get the good bits. Lily's punchlines got way, way funkier than that. It was like the Seminese conflict, the Kohoi massacre, and the 36 famine in Ye suit all rolled into one person, then cast in Oranyi's ceramic armour which he wore in bed and in the shower. <laughs> ah, Dear me, you, you like this kind of stuff? We're all scraping up any happiness we can find, officer. Going around with our little scouring sticks. You, your first love, Mr. Kohoi here. Did he tell you he had actually done any of those things? Here in Martinez, I mean? No, we were too busy laying waste our own nervous systems to direct any of the fury outward. He seemed, she thinks, he seemed happy, I guess, at ease, as much a man like him could be. Thank you for clearing that up, miss, says Kitsuraki as he turns to us. Whenever you're ready, I'm interested to hear what Titus Hardy has to say now. She takes a very small sip of her coffee and smiles. Okay, so now that we have got a bit of step further with the conversation and you know a few more minutes have passed since I last asked you, uh, are you sure that you haven't had enough time to compose yourself? Can you now tell us more about the victim? Like, for example, his name. He's already, she's already slipped his name in there. She called him... Lily, Lely? Yeah. Come on, Kitsuragi, keep up. Aren't you taking flipping notes? Uh, nickname? I guess. He came from Lelystad. It's short for that. And it was his army name, apparently. He said his real name wasn't his. I tried to pry it out of him, but it was no use. Hmm, Lelystad. That's a good start. The lieutenant writes it down in his notebook. Oh, now he's cracking on. And then tears out a page and hands it to you. We have a few questions you can help us with. A few things a field autopsy alone can't answer. The young woman cranes her neck, trying to catch a glimpse of the page the lieutenant passed to you. On it is a list of autopsy observations, recorded neatly in blue ink. The last missing pieces of a puzzle of flesh. And he's leaving it up to us to get the answer. Oh, well, let me see here. I'm looking at the paper. Um, uh, um, um, how old was he, miss? 42. 42? Are you sure? I would have had him above 50. He had many scars that made him appear older, but no. 
the memory makes her smile. We even celebrated his birthday like some weeks ago. It was a funny two days. <laughs> he had little reason to lie to me. We were slightly off then. Thank you for clearing it up. The lieutenant makes a correction in his notes. The adversary won. Uh, eye colour. Blue. Light blue. They were like... She stops, her eyes half closed, then continues. Like little blue galaxies, you know? It was strange seeing those eyes in his fucked up face. <laughs> Uh, pardon the swearing. She takes a drag. I do him an injustice. He wasn't ugly, and he had a beautiful, soft voice. Very surprising, what with all the scarring. It was quite something, watching him speak. He had a combat wound on his chin and mouth. Yes. Severe. She seems to enjoy the word. It made him look... Like half his face was cracking away in some strange smile. That and those eyes. It's clear she was very much attracted to him. And still is. Yeah, I'm getting that electrochemistry. Thank you for stating the obvious. You're worse than flipping Kitsuragi here. So you found him attractive then? Of course. He was the most strangely beautiful man I've ever been with. And I mean that. She shivers slightly, then adds, now he's dead. A pity. Oh yes, the lieutenant suddenly remembers. His hair, if you can remember. It was light brown, almost blonde. He darkened it with brilliantine. Made it oily. Not nice to stroke. I couldn't convince him to leave it alone. <laughs> I think we'll leave that. Out of the conversation. <laughs> um, let's get to the rest of the questions. Uh, it's a strange thought just popped into our head there for a second. He had a tattoo. Uh, what did it mean? Oh, she smiles. That. Yeah. Um, an orange map of the waterways? Sure, waterways. It was mostly for showing off to chicks, though. Uh, how so? How? <laughs> She leans back. Imagine him lying in bed, freakish, muscular, to, laid out on the sheets. Scarred, of course. Tattooed. The sheets are dirty for some reason. He's smoking and drinking, of course, and his chest and shoulders and arms are studded with stars. Tens, hundreds of them, maybe even thousands. And the woman goes like... She points at the air with her sharp nailed finger, picking out an imaginary tattoo star. What was this, baby? And he says, she lowers her voice comically, that was too hardcore. Don't ask me about that. So she goes, okay, but what's this, baby? And he's like, saw some bad shit there, killed some loincloths. And so it goes, star after star, port after port, third world country after third world country. And he's done horrible things in every single one of them. And you were the woman in this. Oh, yeah, she nods. So can you tell us precisely what these mean? Giving her the uh, photograph. N no, thank you. She does not take it. I've seen enough of him dead. I can tell you what they meant without looking at them. She pours herself some more coffee. Go on, says Kitsuragi, getting a bit impatient. He was a blue-eyed boy with thick arms, from a small town. He was also poor, and the government of Aranya needed some people killed, so they turned him into a grotesque killer for money. He went to Killer Academy in Redifort. Then he killed some people on the Seminese Islands and on other islands too. All of the islands. After this, he came to Revishol and got killed himself. Thank you for clearing that up. She looks over her shoulder to the sea, then back at you, smiling faintly. Change of topic, perhaps? Uh, 
Not quite. Where is Lelystad, the place, I mean? In Oranyi, officer. It's, uh, I think, municipality is the term. Uh, nowhere town there. You were almost right, officer. The lieutenant shakes his head like you just missed a shot in darts. That means his race was Occidental, not Mondial. I'll update the form. You were both from Oranyi. Yes, we were compatriots. Did that bring you together? No, he was too old for that. And from another part of Oranyirik. I didn't even understand his accent. <laughs> what brought us together wasn't Oranyi. It was bad habits. Sex. Alcohol. Speed. Probably also Sildenafil. And violence. Okay, okay, bloody hell, fine. I'm trying to be sensitive here. <laughs> we ordered a toxicology report. Any idea what that will show us? A real rainbow splattering of pharmaceuticals, I bet. <laughs> she grins. Barbiturates, amphetamine, sildenafil. Hear that? Sildenafil! Just like you suspected. You have a great nose for this stuff. Oh, what, what, what's the NFL? I'm, I'm just asking for a friend. It's for maintaining an erection. Uppers are vasoconstrictors. Vaso constrictors? So that feet becomes problematic. Oh, I see. Uppers. Yes, as in drugs that uh, lift you up are vasoconstrictors. So it becomes a problem getting an erection. So you need to combine that with sildenafil. Okay. Okay. And why do I know this? <laughs> because you're a scientist, of course. Oh, oh yes, of course. That, uh, that uh, science degree I've completely forgotten about, of, of course. <laughs> How much does that toxicology report cost the police of Revishall? I can do it for half of that. Save you some money. Make some myself. It's quite expensive, miss, but we'll manage without your help for now. Oh, don't be a party pooper. <laughs> okay, one last question. This might be a difficult one, but I have to ask it. Could it be that love did him in? It very well could be. Yes. What do you mean? What do I mean? <laughs> She raises an eyebrow. I have no idea. I don't even know what you mean. Love did him in? What does that mean? Uh, he told me. He told me. He spoke to me. Oh my god, no, no, you shouldn't be going down this line. No, don't say it, don't say it. He told me himself. Yes, I spoke to him, you see. Uh, he told me love did him in. That's not funny, officer. Do you see me laughing? I'm serious. I spoke to him. He spoke to me. He told me. Whilst I was stroking his head. <laughs> I think we're finished with this line of questioning. Giving the lieutenant back his notes before we get ourselves into any more trouble. All right. The lieutenant puts the slip back in his notes and observes the young woman for a moment. Coolly, gracefully, she pours herself yet more coffee. Hmm. Nice room you've got here, miss. Yeah, it's uh, <clears throat> pretty deluxe. But it is. You've got more than one floor for a start. Better than ours, or our former room at least. Uh, did you know that door down there points to a downstairs uh, elevator? I did not. She takes a drag of her cigarette and smiles. Mystery solved then. I kept wondering where it led. There may be more to this mystery at some time uh, later. She's holding back. Let's make a mental note for now. Yeah, there were tracks on the floor. Recent tracks. Uh-huh. This isn't good. She feels like quarry encircled. Her eyes dart to the floor. Yeah. It's an old pinball workshop. Uh, uh, pinball. Yeah, used to be an arcade, you see. Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad someone's had fun. That's all for now. That's all for now. Yes. Uh... So what are you doing here? 
in the whirling in rags. I am wintering. How long have you been staying here? About four months. I came in November. Why here? Here in the whirling or here in Matinees or, or, or in Revachon? Revachon. I always wanted to see the only city in the world in the worst time of the year. It's a tourist thing. Okay. So what are you doing here in Matinees? I hear this is where the washed up disco has beens go. No! This is Sassy Town, it's where the future of dance lies. <sighs> if you say so, officer. If you say so. And finally, what are you doing in the whirling specifically? Well, it's the funkiest building in Matinees. And because all the other buildings are bombed to hell. Ah. I see. Uh, we won't mention the drugs because we've taken them, and uh, we won't. Duh, we won't go there. We're an antagonizer. I'm done for now. Or are we? Look her in the eye. Why? Eight percent chance. Face quivering, lips twitching. Is he tempted to go into the look again? This is the, obviously going to fail, but we... Double six? Nah, of course not. She looks back. Time moves slowly. The triangles of her face rearranging into a weary smile. Don't worry. We will protect you from her beauty. We will consult you through the reefs and sounds of her persona. You are advised. There are muscles on long white bones that lie in her limbs, just below the silver jump. What the hell is happening? Nothing. It's time passing. Don't worry. You are not a fool. Anything out of the ordinary and you would be notified. What the hell is going on? Say the woo, my woo, woo, bing, 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 bing. What's going on? What's happening? Air moves in your windpipe. Your heart beats. You are a detective. Get back to detect. Uh, am I being beguiled here? What's going on? She presses her elbows against her waist and slowly turns her head. Quickly, look away! Look away! The strange moment ends. It was brief, no longer than 2.2 seconds, but it, to us it felt like minutes of internal monologue. <laughs> the hell was, what the hell was that about? Uh, um, th thank you for your time. Thank you, thank you. What the hell? Wait, stop. That man, bloated beyond all recognition. He was 42. Yeah, that's what he said. That's what she said. Below the damage, the weeks of decomposition, all the swollen indignity of morality, of mortality. He was 42 years old? Yes, and? How old are you? That's where this is going. 45,000 litres of raw alcohol has left its disfigurements. Was that 45 litres? 45,000? Or 45? 45 still a lot, isn't it? I don't know this number. It's a strange way to write 45. It's a point and not a comma. Hmm, interesting. A hell of a lot of alcohol <laughs> has left a disfigurement, okay? What lies beneath? You do wonder. You could ask either one of them. Miss? <laughs> How old do you think I am? Huh? <laughs> she leads in close. How old do I think you are? Uh, I don't know. One, two... I don't know what I'm supposed to say. How, how old is a newborn cop who doesn't remember he's a cop? I mean, look at me. Let's, have a look. Let's be realistic. I'm not 35. Come on. I'm too experienced for that. About 45. Say not 55. Are you having a laugh? I've still got my own knees for heaven's sake. Uh, 45. No, you're not. He's squinting at you. Excuse me? I didn't, re I didn't recall asking you. <laughs> sure he is. You know, age 
is just a number, you know. Yes, but for him that number is higher than 45. <laughs> Pipe yourself down, Sonny Jim. Wait. This requires scientific measurements. Bring it on. Bring it on, I'm not afraid of the truth. How old am I? Date of birth generator. A thought has been unlocked. To the laboratorium. What the hell? Right, date of birth generator. Your face looks like it's 58. And your body feels like it's 60. Your mind feels like it's lived for one day or a hundred. Both longer than they ought to be. The day and the century. But for how long? Has this thing attached to your sentience walked the planet? Time to start racking those brains of yours, Elder One. When and where were you born? Now, I'm kind of intrigued, but I don't think, after that conversation, I don't think Costo is overly concerned with his age. All he knows is he feels... Well, it probably doesn't feel like good right now because he's not got a skin full of alcohol and drugs. But... Tonight, when Kitsurag has been kicked to the curb and we're in our cabin and we can sniff some speed and take some alcohol and maybe even go speak with our drunken friends near our little uh, hut, then we'll be feeling on top of the world. And indeed, as per uh, class here, age will be nothing more than a flipping number. We don't need that. Telling us how old we are. I really think it is. Right, we've got a skill point to put into something. And uh, where do we put it? I don't know. I think one of these two. Pain threshold or endurance. Um, I've seen a few positive endurance checks. And that's also going to give us extra health. Probably nothing much else, to be honest with you. What does it? Metabolism. Circulatory system. Improves your health. Yeah. I don't think we need that at the second, actually, given our current physique. We've got quite a lot of health as it is at the tech. Pain threshold, maybe? No damage so you can push on, blooded and crawling to the bittersweet end, or the bitterest end. Negate damage, mental pain, heartbreak, loneliness, things that can become a thrill you seek out and perversely revel in. At high levels, pain threshold turns in on itself in a seriously unhealthy way, with full-on self-destructive behaviour. Sounds like us. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. S sounds definitely like us. Right, so, where are we going to go now at 15.09? We are off to speak with Titus, apparently. Oh yeah, I always like talking with Titus. Okay, so here we are once again at the downstairs area of the Wollongong Rags, about to speak with our good buddy, Titus Hardy. It's you again. What is it? Yes. I talked to class here about the tape. And? And nothing. She stands by what she said. That fucking fucker. He stares at his beer for two seconds. Intently. Then turns to you. You're the worst cops in Revershaw. I gave you gold on that tape. Gold, you say? Gold? She just laughed it off, Titus. Laughed it off like it didn't even affect her one iota. Fucking fuckily fucker. He shakes his head in disbelief. And what did she say then, eh? That's it. Fine. People are supposed to be like that. Well, it didn't come as a surprise. She definitely wasn't scared. Yes, in fact, the lieutenant looks at you and then at him. I thought she thought it was a little funny. Oh, don't start quite well. Actually, yes, yeah, start winding him up. Funny! Titus mumbles, his lips barely moving. Oh, goddamn psycho whore. All right! Slams his giant fist on the door frame. Oh, fucking righty then to quote Jim Carrey. I guess it's good then, that fucking... Please do try to control yourself in the presence of visitors, Titus, says the old uh, lawyer outside. 
her voice a bit softer than earlier. Titus rubs his chin with his palm as if trying to grind it smooth. This is just perfect. Just fucking perfect. Any thoughts on this law, men? Women are crazy. Irrational. That's what you're thinking, right? Also, your fists are itching for a bump. <laughs> I'm not dressed for a fight. I'm going to put my fighting, my fighting vest on and have a sip of alcohol if we're going to be starting fighting here. Maybe she isn't who you thought she was. Nah, I know her. He looks upstairs distracted. She's just a girl in over her head. <laughs> She's not some helpless girl. She handled the mercenary well enough. Handled him? He balks. She got into some stupid shit with that guy. Shit we had to take care of. Yes. Yes, we heard all about it and the fact still stands. You were more disturbed by the tape than her. Yeah. Be straight with me, Titus. What really happened? Come on now. I already told you! He puts his giant face in his hands and sighs. We fucking hanged him! There's less gusto in his voice now. His men too are growing increasingly silent. Come on, Titus. It's been a long day. I'm tired of running back and forth between you. I can see you're tired too. Why don't you just... You know what? He gets closer. I am tired. I'm tired of you and the whore upstairs. Next time you see her, tell her Titus said fuck off. He throws his beer can down. This is the petulant rage of someone who's at the end of their wits. That lying scamming. We're done. This is over. You understand? Your little investigation is over. Yeah. There's a silence in the room. Alan starts saying something then thinks best not to. What is this quiet funeral shit? What we need is some beers in us. He looks around. Bartender! Twenty beers for the dock workers' union. Uh, why don't we make it forty, huh? The man shouts from behind the counter. Why don't we make it a hundred beers? You're not loud enough. A hundred beers? Now we're talking. Glenn livens up. Hoppity hop over here, cafeteria manager. The window might be closing. The more beers they get in them, the less cooperative they will be. Convince Titus he's been manipulated. 28% chance. Holy cow. Maybe if we go to one of these, uh, we might get a bit more cooperation out of him. Uh, me and Everard talked, you know. He promised me you'd cooperate, you cooperate. And uh, I'll say you're not cooperating well enough for my liking. Oh, so you wouldn't talk to my mummy? And now she's making me play with you? He spits his at it, lawman. And what's going to happen if we don't? The little guy leans forward. You're going to go and tell on us? Hmm. Yeah. Why don't you push me some more and find out, gimp? I hope we're talking to him or not. Well, I don't know who, I don't care who we're talking to right now. You're going to let him talk to me like that, Titus? He called me a gimp. <laughs> he turns his eyes full of hurt to the big man. Let's see. He chuckles. Yeah, I guess I am, you big pussy. He turns back to you. The old man sent word you'd be around again. That's the reason I'm being so forthcoming with you. Don't wear it out. 42%. You see that? You see that? Right, we've got no rhetoric clothes, I don't think. I don't think he's going to be scared about the hangman's friends coming for him somehow. And I don't think we can push on that anymore. We're going to have to go with it. 42%, just less than 50 Come on! Yes! Convince Titus he's been manipulated. You should know by now, Titus will never falter. No, but one of his boys will. Fat Angus, the powerful guy, Mr. All Muscle, the time has come. Put him in the pressure cooker. Just remember it's about more than class here. It's about these men and Martinez, their district, their responsibility. Outside in the midday sun, ruins. The pavements are cracked and the benches peeling. 
newspapers blow in the wind. That's it then. Case closed. Come on, Kim. Better get out of here. Huh? Lieutenant raises his brow. Yeah, come on, Kim. Come on, we're done. We're done here. The f yeah, finished. Hey, he'll get it. Go on. Write it down, Kim. Write it down, you little book. Master days. They just kill you because they don't like you. It's time to do things around here. Uh, got it, yeah. He takes out his notebook. Kill you because they don't like you. All because... Because they like killing. Animals. Yeah, we liked it. It was fun, wasn't it, guys? He looks around. We had a great time. It wasn't for your fucking entertainment, Dennis. She... He gets a hold of himself. They kill you... Continues writing down. Because they think it's funny. Yes. Yes. They do. Um, that's exactly what they do. It's cool, guys. It's cool. They just drag them out back, light the corpses on fire and piss on them. They don't care. We didn't like... We didn't like him on fire. You hear the fat man wheeze. <gasps> He's trying to get up. No, no, no one pissed on him either. That's it. That's the weak one. You flushed him out. Now go for the... Officer, you will be next if you don't shut up. The old man reaches for his belt, but his voice is strangely calm. He's on to you. He knows what you're trying to do. Oh, shit. Oh, God. Oh, what's he going to do? What's he going to flip it in the middle of the bloody place here? Oh, no, go go for Angus. Do we trust our rhetoric? Oh, his rhetoric's telling us twice. Oh. Come on, we can't screw this up. Come on. No, keep on the fat guy. Oh, what? You're going to... No. No, turn to Theo. Turn to Theo. Address Theo. The fat guy might intervene. What happens if I keep talking? You're going to kill me too, are you? In this very bar? For nothing? No. You see him shake his silvery head. His calm voice is almost kind now. I'm not going to do it. I'm too old for a shot like that now. You hear that, Angus? They're going to kill me. Suddenly, there is an awful ringing in your ears. Your body temperature spikes. You're burning all over with fear. I'm not fearful. The most terrible fear. Bigger than any before. What, what fear? What's happening? What's going on? I'm, I don't, am I missing a trick here? To your right, you sense the air move. The lieutenant draws his firearm. Oh, my God. What's happened? You only manage to perform one more movement, an instinctive jerk to your left, then no sound. No one screams. It's impossible to say where it came from. <laughs> what? It's our news today. The district of Martinez saw two officers floating in the canal. The officers were pursuing a murder investigation, but got caught in the dock worker strike and were gunned down under unclear circumstances. What? The hell just happened there? I think we pushed too hard there. Good old rhetoric, uh, leading us astray. Right, let me see what time we're on. 45 minutes, pretty much. There's the end of the session then, guys. Dead. End of the series. We're dead. Game over. <laughs> right, join me in the next session where we shall rejoin that conversation where we pick where, where we'll get to roughly the same kind of point we can and maybe take a different tact. I don't know. Let's just see where we, let's, let's just see where we last loaded up here. You know what? Bear with me, we'll have one last fly through that entire conversation arc. And we'll see if we can get to the same point and try a couple of different options, perhaps. Be a second. Right. It took me about four or five reloads to get back to the exact same point where we passed the check. So, uh, yeah. So putting pressure on the big guy. 
We start playing acting with Kim. Yeah, we're going home, Kim. What? Well, well, yeah, come on, run it all down. Get your notebook out. Because they like killing. Uh, well, yeah, you do, don't you? Yeah. And they just, uh, yeah. Like you're on fire, they do. Piss on him. Going for the kill, Theo steps up. And last time we turned to uh, Theo, this time we'll continue down Angus. C continue on the weaker one. Oh, what? You're gonna kill me like you killed him for no fucking reason? We didn't kill him. We didn't even hang him. He was dead when. <gasps> he takes a breath, wheezing. Bingo. Shut up, Angus! Yeah, did I hear that right? He, he, he was dead before you hanged him? Ooh. Fatty! The little guy hits Angus on the back of the head. A loud slap. Say one more thing to the cops and I'll... Dennis! Titus roars. Stand down or I'll beat your head in! Theo! He points to the old man. Take your hand off the belt. This isn't 31. I've got this under control. The room falls quiet. So quiet you can hear Angus wheeze. <gasps> Angie, where's your goddamn inhaler? You sound like you're dying. I left it at home. I can't get it. I'm too fucked. He grabs his chest. <gasps> I'm sorry. Why are you so fucking fat? <laughs> Lizzie snaps at him. Now it's all pointless because of you. You wasted my time. I told you, Titus. He turns to him. I told you. Just give her up. Lizzie. He turns to the fixer. Your help is no longer needed here. Go tell Evra. Fine, I'll tell him. After a long walk along the coast, she walks off without looking back. You're in. He's all yours. Questions? So you didn't kill him after all. He was already dead. He nods. You hang the corpse to cover up the real cause of death. The bullet in his head. Why? Because the girls asked us to. They were in some shit. Did she kill him? Cop? I have no idea. The girl says she didn't. What happened last Sunday night? Come on. Class, you came down. He points to the stairs. She seemed really out of it, drugged up. Even more than usual. Bug-eyed and gurney, you know? Not in a fun way. It looked like she'd redosed after something went down. I've seen that look before. She was scared. I knew someone had died. How did you know? I've done this job for ten years. I've seen it before. It's the politician in the motel room with the dead hooker scenario. Only in reverse. <laughs> Good analogy, boss. The rat-faced man snickers. You don't get to talk yet, Shanky. He points at him. You're still on the bench. And you keep taking it easy too, Angus. <laughs> he turns back to you. It's okay with the fat man. Still wheezing there. He couldn't speak if he wanted to. What happened then? We went upstairs. Sure as day the mert was dead. And there was a bullet hole through the window. Fucking. He scratches his chin. Dirty sheets and bottles everywhere. Tibbs patched the window and the corpse... We hanged. Who's Tibbs? The 8th Hardy? Nah, he's my brother. He's in the window replacement business. <laughs> so if... Uh, so who killed the Merc then? Any leads? Not yet. Just some ideas. She says the shot came from outside, behind the window somewhere. So that's a clue. So the secret room behind there, the footprints in, she came through there, up, she came through the kitchen, went up into the pinball room, through into there, boom, dead. 
That woman, eighth hardy, boom, so case case closed. Case closed. Kind of, because we don't know who she is yet. <laughs> what are you thinking? I'm thinking someone's past caught up with him. Either hers or his. Hers, you mean? She's got one of those checkered pasts. The shot could have missed. Could have been meant for her. I like that. The young guy nods. Be thinking the same thing myself. And you had ideas about his past too? I do. One of those mercenary buddies of his could have done it. They got guns, training, years of bad blood probably. Or it could have been someone else from Crenel. Pauses to think. Tell you what I'd do. Check out the coast for vantage points. Maybe consult with a ballistics buddy of mine. That's what I'd do. If I wasn't too busy doing this clown dance with you. So if Classy didn't kill him, why the cover up? You may have noticed our girl's in some shit of her own. Kind of shit. I can't show up on police radar, kind. There are people after her. From old, old world. Where she came from. Who are they? They're powerful. He looks out the window. Connected to the Moral Linton. That politician in the room. In the guy's room. Here, this guy. Yeah. He's after her. <laughs> what kind of a stupid circle of bloody mess is this? She's clearly afraid for her life. Says if she showed up in your systems, she'd be ghosted away. And why would you help someone like that? By taking on a murder. Why would I? He shrugs. I guess we abide all sorts of runaways and losers here. It's a matinee's thing. Hmm. Whose idea was it to hang him anyway, hers? In a manner of speaking. What do you mean? We had help from another girl. It was her idea to hang him, and I liked it. For political reasons. Sent a good message. Yeah, that's just to confirm. Her, yeah? Drug trafficker? Missing 8th Hardy? The big guy steps toward you. Fella, you think too much. He's off, alright? You're gonna get hurt. You're gonna hurt your head. That woman is just affiliated with the Hardy boys. You don't know her anyway. You know, it's okay for there to be a hardy girl, you know, Titus. <laughs> oh, dear. Yeah. His face sets like concrete. He shakes his head solemnly. We're hardy boys. And that's it. Sure, but anything. Give me a name, current location. No. You're not getting to her. It's classier you want to talk to. Okay, thank you, Titus, thank you. I shall go and talk to her for the last time because I'm sick of this game of ping pong. You do that. He grabs his beer and swills it in his hand, then thinks of something. Hey, cop! Before you go. Suddenly the wind picks up outside. You hear it rattling the large windows in their frames. It carries newspapers, circles the whirling in rags in a warm column. She, he looks up, classier, Came to Martinez to hide. Many of us did. This is where you wash up when there's nowhere left to go. The Union takes you in. Now. She refused that protection. But. But you would prefer if we didn't take her away. That's right. If we didn't take care of the people who end up here. This place would just be a couple of ruins and some cargo containers. We'll take that into account. The lieutenant slides his notebook into his coat pocket and turns to leave. Wow. Some kind of superstar. How appropriate. They say the world isn't ready for a rock and roll cop. No one wants their state monopoly on violence to be mixed with celebrity worship. They claim to know it would be dangerous for detectives to rise to the ranks of demigods and have sexual encounters with barely legal cover girls. 
It would be insane, they say. To all of this you say, fuck off and die. In a cool voice. You people have no idea how good these cops are going to get. They're going to crack 20 cases a day. In the future, cops will be like astrophysicists, or prime ministers, or prophets. And you're the first one. Minus one logic, price of self-delusion. We'll take that. But we've raised our learning cap to, for, to visual calculus, suggestion, electrochemistry, and composure to six. We'll take that too. Some kind of superstar. Hey, 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 of course we are. Of course we are. Right then. So that was quite a conversation. And we start the next session like we started this one. And that will be speaking with Classia. <laughs> so as we end the uh, this session like we ended the last one, it will almost be like this session didn't exist. In a weird kind of way. Till next time. It's DJ Costo signing off. <laughs>